continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. We're looking at number two here. Number two here is the faithful declaration on future worsening kingdoms. Now it's going to tell the dream and the dream is going to tell about the kingdoms of the earth from one to the other, from the other to the next one, from the next one to the final one before Christ will come. And this is about the kingdoms of the world that will be going from bad to worse and worse to worse and worse to the worst. It tells us in Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 28, Daniel chapter 2 we're reading from verse 28 but there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets do not be afraid or ashamed to declare the, that a God exists anywhere you are and you know because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth whether they are Jews or Gentiles do not be ashamed and here uh, Daniel was not ashamed he said but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be be in the latter days the dream was not just for the days for the time for the period when Nebuchadnezzar was alive it will be for the latter days the dream and the vision of thy head upon thy bed are these look at verse 29 in verse 29 as for thee O king thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed now daniel is revealing even the thoughts that nebuchadnezzar had before the dream came he said uh, nebuchadnezzar you must remember when you were to sleep you were thinking in your heart what shall be after you have left, because we are going to leave. Although the magicians and astrologers, the same king, live forever, you and I know that you are going to depart. And the, the thought came to your mind what shall come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. In verse 30, in verse 30, he tells us, But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of your heart. He said that's the reason why. Now, the confidence that Daniel had. The declaration that Daniel made fearlessly, courageously, without being afraid of Nebuchadnezzar, of Ariok, of any other uh, uh, Chaldean, that's the kind of courage he wants us to have. That's the kind of mind he wants us to have when he sends us to declare what will come upon people now and also in the future. Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 7, Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 7, but the Lord said unto me, unto me, Jeremiah, and unto you as well, the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Then in verse 8, it tells us in verse 8, be not afraid of their faces because you think their faces show their mind the faces reflect the thoughts they have the faces will show you what they are planning what they are thinking and if they are going to hurt you or harm you you'll see it on their faces except they train themselves not to show it on their face and so uh, uh, jeremiah don't be afraid do not be afraid 
up their faces for i am with thee to deliver thee says the lord in verse 9 it says then the lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the lord said unto me behold i have put my words in thy mouth and then in verse 10 it says see i have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms and to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant it doesn't want us to be you know we're shivering and shaking and timid and fearful and frightened before the people he sends us to god loves them and he sends us a message of love that will save their soul, that will deliver them from eternal death, that they will not perish. And if you carry such a wonderful message, a life-saving message, a soul-saving message, and you love the people you are speaking to, then you and God has assured you that he is sending you. He put his word in your mouth. You will not be afraid in Jesus' name. I will not be afraid in Jesus' name. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Look at verse 6. Even in that situation, in verse 6, it says, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister. When you put the people in remembrance, this is what God has said. This is what is happening now. Everything is according to his word. This is prophecy being fulfilled. And you remind them that Christ is about to come. And everyone that is not saved or backsliding shall come back and be saved. And everyone that is saved and is not a living a consistent holy life and without holiness no man shall save the Lord. You encourage them and you pray with them and you counsel them that whatever challenges in their lives not making them to show that consistent life of Christian faith and salvation you root that out of their lives and you lead them to real repentance and restoration and you lead them to that sanctification that without holiness no man shall say the Lord and then you let them seek the power of God that will strengthen them, embolden them encourage them, empower them. That's what the Lord is calling us to. And we do that without any fear. And we do that without uh, you know, shaking or uh, whatever before anyone. It says you put the brethren in remembrance of this thing. Thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast ordained uh, attain it says in verse 16 uh, in verse 16 take heed unto thyself don't be timid take heed unto thyself live courageously live with conviction and live without compromise take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Amen. Amen. Look at number three here. Number three now, we're looking at the uh, firm decree of the most foremost wise king. That's God. We're talking about God is foremost, is the highest, is eternal, and is uh, when one kingdom passes away, he still remains there. And when one king dies, and changes and God changes him and he setteth up another God is still there and when one powerful emperor powerful man powerful king when he's deposed when he is pushed aside another one comes God is still there the same God at the time of uh, Pharaoh, the same God at the time of the Assyrian king Sennacherib, at the same God at the time of Nebuchadnezzar, the same God at the time of Herod, is still the same God on the throne. They come, they go. 
They come, they perish. They come, they are dethroned. They come, they are driven away. But God remains the same. He is the foremost wise God. And he has his own decree too. And when he makes his own decree, the decree of the eternal God will stand. We're looking at uh, Daniel chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 30. Daniel chapter 2, verse 30. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king that thou mightest know the thoughts of thine heart. In Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at verse 17. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. It says in verse 17, it tells us this matter is by the decree of the watches of the watchers and that and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high the most high god in heaven rules in the kingdom of men and giveth aid to whomsoever he will you see that the god of heaven the most high rulers in the kingdoms of men and he giveth the kingdoms to whomsoever he will and setteth over each even the people like look like the basest of men look at verse 24 in verse 24 it says this is the interpretation O king and this is the decree of the most high which is come upon my lord the king god is the one that rules and whoever he puts there is still in charge and he has a decree that supersedes that goes beyond the decree of any man in proverbs chapter 8 reading from verse 29 proverbs chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 29. When he gave to the sea, here is Christ talking. And he said, when the Father, the Almighty, the ancient of days, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then in verse 30, it says, Then I was by him. And then it says, As one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Psalm 2, we're looking at verse 6. In Psalm 2, looking at verse 6, it says, Yet I have said, my king upon my holy hill of Zion. That's the almighty saying. He has the final say. He has the final word about the dominions and the kingdoms of this world. And he says, I sent my, I sent my king. That's his only begotten son. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Look at verse 7. It says in verse 7, I will declare the decree he has the final decree on any life on any king on any community on any nation he has the final decree upon the kingdoms of this world Nebuchadnezzar does not did not have the final decree there is another decree the decree of the almighty God that supersedes every other decree on earth I will declare the decree the Lord have said unto me thou art my son this day have I begotten not thee and then in verse 8, in verse 8, it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, the Gentiles, for thine inheritance, and 
the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Then in verse 9, in verse 9 he said, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron because all judgment have been given to the hand of the Son of God and shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And then in verse 10 he said, Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be wise now, O ye emperors. Be wise now, O ye rulers. Because there is one that is higher than the highest. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. And then in verse 11, in verse 11, serve the Lord with fear. That is your fear. If you don't come to the Lord and seek the Lord, now if you perish, if you die in a condition of your sinfulness, even though you are a king, even though you are an emperor, even though you are a ruler, where will you spend eternity? Serve the Lord. Come and repent. Come and seek the Lord and have salvation and remain and abide in that grace of God in salvation. It says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. And then in verse 12, it says, kiss the Son. Befriend the son, make him your friend, and let all the wall of demarcation between you and the son, the savior, your substitute, and the redeemer. Let everything, the wall of demarcation, be broken down and befriend him. Let him say, you are my friend because I have called you, I have chosen you, and I have washed your sin, and I have made you a new creature now in Christ. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. And ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled, but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Amen. You put your trust in him, in Christ, the Son of God, to be your Savior. You put your trust in him so that he can be your sanctifier. You put your trust in him so that he can empower you. And that power will make you to stand. And then you'll be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. And his nature will come into you. And because his nature comes into you, you will live the life that glorifies God. The life that when time is ended, here for you, for us, and for the world in the rapture, the resurrection, you'll go with the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's stand up, talk to the Lord in prayer, and forget every other thing around you, and forget, you know, whatever it is, anything there, anything there. Forget everything and call upon the name of the Lord. We've learned so much today, and we need to take all that to the Lord so that His strength will be in us, His power will be in us, and the assurance and the fearlessness and the courage and the conviction will be you know look at daniel why can't you be another daniel today talk to the lord in prayer and say oh lord here am i i have heard about the unforgettable daniel i want to so live my life that i too by the grace of god in the strength of the lord and with the real salvation i have I will live an unforgettable life. It starts with salvation. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. That same change you made in Daniel and that same transformation you made in Daniel and that same courage you gave Daniel and that same conviction you gave Daniel, I want to so live the life that I'll fear nothing on earth and even if Kadnesa was a frown, with a few and uh, with his uh, fire and fiery nature. Lord, give me the heart that will live for you. Unforgettable. Unforgettable. Anywhere that I find myself in my community, I'll so have the truth penetrating my life, saturating my life, and keeping me to stand firm on the truth. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, and tell him, O oh Lord, here am I. Pray a decisive prayer, a decisive prayer between you and the Lord, telling the Lord, O oh Lord, I want to have that kind of life that is firm, fearless, focused, living for your glory, telling him, and he will do it in your life.
that your life to your neighbors, your life to your community, your life, anywhere, everywhere will be unforgettable. They'll know you are a child of God. They'll know you have the grace of God in you. They'll know that that grace of God in you teaches you to deny ungodliness and to deny all worldly lusts and then to live a righteous life, a godly life, a sober life. Tell the Lord, let the light of the gospel so shine in your life that everyone around you beholding you will know you have been of the Lord Jesus, that you're a new creature in Christ, that all things have passed away, and that all things have become new. And if you have friends, prayer partners, let them be people of this like precious faith. Let them be people who are not pretenders, who are not hypocrites. Let them be people who love the Lord like you love the Lord, who are committed to the Lord like you are committed to the Lord, who are consecrated to the Lord completely with all their heart, all their soul, and all their mind. Let them be people who have the same understanding and the same deep commitment as you have unto the Lord. Let us say how Daniel surrounded himself with people of like precious faith who are your friends are they people that easily give up they can't endure a little persecution they can't endure a little trial they can't endure a passing decree and they are shaking and they, can't, they don't have the same faith you have in the promises of God are those your friends why don't you say Lord help me give me friends that have the same like precious faith friends that to stand where we ought to stand on the promises of God friends that have more of heaven than the earth in their lives tell the Lord tell the Lord that you'll be able to have a common faith when you make petition before the Lord and then you pray with confidence any challenge two of you shall agree together with confidence any problem common problem you're trying to solve and you pray with confidence confidence in the Lord that I know I know I know that God will answer and you have common confidence the same confidence in the promises of God that while they are yet speaking, I will answer. And before they finish it, making their petition, I give them the solution. And you have that confidence yourself. And then you surround yourself with the people that have the same, the same confidence. Not people that have a different doctrine a different interpretation, a different lifestyle, a backsliding lifestyle, a compromising lifestyle. No, the people that hold on to this world and they say, come watch me. Here is where I stand and I stand with you. <clears throat> I stand with you. Tell the Lord. And when God answers prayer, then you come with praise. Praise before the Lord, perpetual praise. You're always praising the Lord. You're never grumbling, never complaining. Why did God bring me to this situation? Morning, noon, and night, you're praising the Lord. The answer has come. You are praising the Lord. The Jericho walls are still up. You are praising the Lord. The night in the dungeon, midnight, with Paul and Silas, you are praising the Lord. And it's a praise of God in your mouth, perpetually, that will grant you that miraculous answer that you are seeking. Present time.
praise the Lord. Hold up, praise the Lord. Traffic jam, praise the Lord. On the long queue, sweaty in your car, praising the Lord. At all times, in all things, at all places, in every situation, when the people of the world are talking negative and they're talking divergent things, you have your mouth filled with the praises of the Lord. Personal, personal praise. Personal praise. Praising the Lord in a personal way. That man said, seven days, seven times in the day, I praise your name and pray unto you. Every other hour, just remember the Lord. He is in charge. He is in charge. He is in charge. Nebuchadnezzar not taking the power away from the most high God. God is still in charge. Praise him all the time. I want you to be before the people of this world. The fearless, bold, courageous. Don't think of man more than you think of God. Think of God. Meditate on God. Lean on God. Rely on God. Whatever is happening, if that thing is not of God, it will soon pass away. Any decree for many earthly king, nothing will pass away. Is the decree of the King of Kings, the decree of the Lord of Lords, that will stand forever and ever. Don't be afraid of any situation caused by man, planned by man, affected by man, he is man, she is just a woman, the king of heaven that has the final decree. And that final decree says you will live. That final decree says no man shall lay any hand on you to hurt you. The final decree, the decree of God says, he'll give you a long life until you finish the calling he has given you. The decree of the foremost wise king is wise. He knows what you need. He knows the direction of your life. He knows the calling upon your life. And he has made a decree. For the son, his only begotten son. And for you, son of God, daughter of God. He'll do good in your life. Think of that. Meditate on that. He will see you through. Daniel lived all the days of Nebuchadnezzar. He lived beyond the days of Nebuchadnezzar. He lived beyond the days of Belshazzar. He lived beyond the days of the Middle Persian Empire. He lived, he lived, he lived. And all through his life, no fear, no timidity, no shaking, no compromise. And the grace of God preserved him until he finished what God called him to do.
is gone, you are here, the Lord will see you through. Amen. <clears throat> In Jesus' name we pray. Can I tell you that the Lord has answered your prayer? That everything you have been afraid of and your heart was beating for, the problem is solved. The secret that perplexed you as you go back home, the Lord himself will reveal that secret. Your life will be lived straightforward, courageously, lovingly, confidently. You are not rude to anybody and you are not cruel to anybody and nobody will be rude or cruel to you in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand, please. Father, in Jesus' name, we well, thank you for what you did for Daniel in particular, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and for that team. And he came to the king, and the king then dropped all his threat he was going to kill everybody. Lord, we pray you will use your sons and your daughters in the service today here, all over the nation, all over the continent, all over the world. Do something special with every brother, every sister in Jesus' name. All the evil decree that other people, other kings or presidents or whatever, leaders of the world, that they are bringing up, that will ruin, that will destroy, that will slay the lives of people. Use your sons here. Use your daughters here. Use your sons everywhere and your daughters. Bring them to the position that they will crush and destroy all evil decrees in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we're just getting to know some good new revelations. And Lord, now that we have this revelation, which we didn't have in the past, concerning our personal lives and concerning your church and concerning the believers everywhere, Lord, Spare our lives. Prolong our lives. So that all that we are getting to know now, we will make use of them profitably in our communities everywhere in Jesus' name. Let the joy of the Lord be the strength of your people. Let the knowledge of the Almighty strengthen us from within in Jesus' name. Lord, you know us, we know ourselves in the past. We have been timid, we have been fearful, we have been doubtful, we have been anxious. But now, from this present time, let the power of God make us steady. The strength of God energize us in Jesus' name. And Lord, no more fear. No more fear of the devil. No more fear of evil spirits. No more fear of any man. No more fear of any woman. No more fear of any decree of man in our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, strengthen your people. Energize your people. Empower your people. And help us to have our eyes open so that we look straight ahead and nothing will divert us in Jesus' name. Power for everyone. Strength for everyone. Vision for everyone. Stability of life for everyone. And Lord, by your special, special gift, long life for everyone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.